What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Mythbusters. Today we're gonna talk about what is better a big enclosure or a small enclosure for your baby geckos right here we have a little lichianus a rachidactylus lichianus the common name is a giant gecko as you can see this little cutie is uh just a baby right now how y'all how are you guys doing man sorry i'm i'm here uh trying to get this thing going but um Thanks for watching, everybody. Anyways, uh, today I wanted to talk about, uh, you know, a lot of people think that the bigger enclosure, the better when it comes to these animals. Um, so I'm here to talk a little bit about, about why that is not true, uh, especially with reptiles or, or at least these type of geckos. The lichianes, uh, gargoyle geckos, crested geckos, all these animals, um, they're all very similar. When you keep these guys in a big enclosure, um, I know it, it's kind of, it's, it's going to be hard to make sense, but when you keep them in a big enclosure, it's going to be a little bit harder for them to, um, to find food. Um, and it's just going to be easier to monitor them in a smaller enclosure. What I have here, this is like a six quart uh, little tub that you could find at Walmart or any, like, uh, like any store basically target whatever um so what i how i keep my gargles my baby lychees all this all these animals is i keep it simple you know i like to basically put a little egg crate in here um the egg crate it you know they could hide underneath it if they'd like they could also climb around it um for the lychees i like to include a little piece of cork bark because uh lychees love cork bark i put some foliage like some fake plants so they could uh you know, if, so it could collect water and they could, if they want, they could drink out of that or uh, hide underneath it or whatever. And that's pretty much it, guys. The paper towel is um, the, the substrate that I use. And I feed them in a little cup like this. As you can see, I just um, put some, you know, some Pangea or Rapashi up in the little corner right there and they lap it up. But these guys, it really is simple is best when it comes to you know baby geckos like these because um you want to be able to monitor them you know you want to be able to to tell that they're eating um and that they're growing when sometimes when you keep them in a bigger enclosure it's going to be um it's going to be they're going to be slower growers and the reason being because it's going to be a little bit harder for them to find their food and sometimes in a bigger enclosure they don't always feel the most secure in this enclosure geckos and reptiles in general um they like to hide and tuck away and <clears throat> and uh if they feel like um if they feel like they're threatened they could just you know hide underneath the cork bark or or uh, hide uh, in, inside the plants or whatever and that's going to make them feel that much more secure so um that's why you know that's why you guys are distracting me with these comments. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. But anyways, um, <laughs> uh, that's why I always recommend to keep them in a smaller container. As you can see over here, um, these are some of our gargoyle geckos here. I'll open up one of these little uh, tubs so you guys could see. Um, here's where I feed them. Again, just a little plastic container. Here's one of the babies, little baby red striped gargoyle gecko. Uh, I keep them in here for a couple grams. A lot of people might think that, you know, this is not the best way to keep them because they're arboreal animals and stuff. But when they're babies, this is honestly the best um, system that I have found um, because obviously it's easier to keep m more of them and they all do great you know uh when i have kept them in bigger enclosures in the past uh, when I'm, I'm speaking about the babies they do tend to you know um not eat as much and they don't grow as fast so i figured that you know keeping them in smaller containers was going to um was going going to help them grow and and be you know the biggest they could be and the healthiest they could be here's another little red striped gargoyle this guy's gonna be a stunner when it grows up this is a deadpool 
and a vel velvet baby. Let's put this guy back. So these guys will tuck away underneath the, what's it called, the, the egg crates. They like to hang on to the egg crates. Um, and you know, I, what another method I use is I also like crumble up this uh, paper. Now this paper is just, for like the bigger geckos, it creates like visual barriers. And for, these, for the babies, it gives them a lot of spots to, to hide into and a lot of stuff to climb on. So I find that it really works. As you can see, look how chubby this little guy is. Another little red stripe. This guy's actually for sale on the website and this is not the best lighting, but you get the, the point. Um, yeah, so I know it doesn't look the best, it's not the most, uh, you know, it doesn't, so it, it doesn't look the best, but when you're keeping animals, you gotta worry about how you're gonna keep them, um, how you're gonna meet their standards basically, and how you're gonna provide everything they need, because the gecko doesn't really care if it's, you know, you know plants or, or cork bark or, or egg crates, they just wanna be, be able to feel secure, you know, um, so, yeah so if you guys have any questions i'd love to answer them uh i'm also by the way we also i know we're a little late but we released uh the youtube video on daytona um it was like a little vlog we did so check that out if you haven't already and um yeah let me see here any questions I got an extreme Harlequin Cresty at NARBC the 23rd. His name is Banana. Oh, that reminds me. I will be at the NARBC show this weekend. Well, not this weekend, next weekend. Uh, so come hang out. If you're there, you know, stop by, say hi. And uh, it's gonna be a blast, man. I'm gonna, I'm, me and Manny are going, um, hopefully with a couple friends. So, you know, feel free to say what's up if you see us. We're also gonna be working on doing some giveaways and we're gonna be filming up there. So, uh, you know, let us know what you guys wanna see up there. Like what kind of video you got, you want me to film. Okay, um, that's so true. That's why most people, people who care about reptiles keep snakes in tubs because they don't want the snake feeling insecure in its surroundings. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, like I said, um, when when people talk about like that the gecko or the snake or any reptile wants a bigger enclosure it's usually they're talking about they're giving like um the animals human like and i forgot what the world word is called but they're they're pretending like the the an, the animal you know has human char characteristics and wants things that we want that we would want you know like we want a bigger house so the gecko must want a bigger house but it's not like that animals are much different they they are mostly reaction based and they're instinct based so it's it's mu it's much different than we are anyways i'm rambling on a little bit um what should i get next I already have a crested gecko and a lychee alex i would recommend a gargoyle gecko or a chewy um chewies are really expensive right now though so i don't know if maybe you could do that but the gargoyle geckos you could get some killer animals um they could be a little pricey but there's also some really nice animals that are cheaper but uh gargoyle geckos are awesome if you want to try something different from the new caledonian geckos i suggest picking up an abronia those are really really cool animals um and definitely more people need to work with them because you know there are not a lot of out, out there we heard about your lily white four times yeah we have we we actually have a group uh up there this enclosure right here has uh, a male lily white with a couple females and we've already gotten a couple eggs so hopefully in a couple months uh we start hatching those two person of yeah anthropomorphism yeah sure guys alan alan are you guys absolutely great with your reptile thank you thank you alan uh smith family tv what size are the enclosures you're using for the babies so those are like six quart containers okay this um i brought this one down so you guys could see it better but this is like a six quart container let me show you yeah okay here six quart i don't know if you saw that but six quart containers for babies um and smaller juveniles what i also do 
is um let me flip this camera hold on so what i also do is i keep some babies in uh either critter keepers like that or 10 gallon tanks and then i put a lot of stuff in there um a lot of you know visual barriers a lot of hiding spots um i include a couple feeding spots and i when you're keeping them when you're keeping them in uh in those 10 gallon tanks or anything that has a lot of ventilation you got to make sure you missed you know or you you got to make sure the humidity stays around 70 um or 80 percent because uh in those enclosures the humidity you know it could lose humidity very quickly and the ba the geckos could start having you know shedding problems and things like that and their babies are very susceptible to shedding problems so if you're gonna keep them in like a 10 gallon tank with a whole bunch of other animals like babies you gotta make sure that you know you're watching them because like i said they dehydrate very quickly so just make sure you're on top of them uh toke gecko do you speak spanish yes i speak spanish i don't know if you were asking me but because i saw that you guys were <laughs> like having a conversation within yourselves uh valerie mystery you can breed your own food for baby beardies and also when they are adults they eat more veggies and insects that's right uh are you going to keep breeding giant day geckos yeah we have a couple group of uh giant day geckos right now um we do have some for sale also so if you're looking for some you know check out our website but uh day geckos it's hard to find females right now we have a surplus of males so hopefully i could find some other females and start breeding them too you know yeah day geckos we we manny has a group breeding so if i'm not breeding them manny will be breeding them uh still upset you're not coming to sarasota next week sorry i'm gonna go to tinley park uh it's one of the biggest reptile shows so had to be there uh valiant faint i would get a leopard gecko but their tails are ugly <laughs> yeah i agree i have one but I, I do think their tails are ugly and that's why it took me like 10 years before i got one <laughs> guess what guys after three years of waiting i have finally brought my lily white awesome that's awesome man lily whites are i think they're the next big things when it comes to crested geckos and it's going to be interesting what happens when people start mixing the lily whites with the azantics and hopefully we start unlocking new genes and new morphs what gecko should i get next diego um have you tried if you don't have already Obviously, crested geckos, gargoyle geckos, lychees. Um, what other geckos are good? I think, I think the day they geckos can be very, very awesome. Like very, they can make beautiful vivarium enclosures and display animals. But they're not like the best handleable pet. But you should try maybe something different, like an African fat tail gecko. Those are really, really cool, and uh, they're very tame too. They're very docile. David, I have a female blue blood I can sell. We'll talk about that later, Devin. Um, you know, is she ready to breed? That that would be that would be useful definitely because I think Manny's looking for some females. Uh, Smith Family TV. I just rescued one who had shed problems that I has that I had started to fix. So I've been near religious about missing my animals thank you for the good advice all right guys that just reminded me this is something that you guys can learn from especially if you're looking to you know breed or get your own little rack system like this one so let me flip the camera with this rack okay in the beginning i was having a lot of shedding issues keeping my babies in here so i couldn't figure out why because i knew the humidity was good and i was misting every day and you know um i was still getting shedding issues so talking to a few people and, and doing some experimentation i decided that i was going to start misting every other day in these because they retain humidity so well and you don't want it to be too wet inside the enclosure neither so what was going on with my crestie is that there was actually um with the babies they were getting over misted so they were for some reason they were they were developing uh shedding issues this was a couple years back so we i mean we finally figured it out we we gave them more ventilation and stuff like that and we're now like i said we're only misting uh once every other day when i feed and that's that's really what did the trick so guys the, these geckos could develop shedding issues very easily it's easy to maintain one gecko and and 
you know, and make sure that one doesn't get any issues and all. But when you start breeding and you, and if you want to eventually produce a lot at a lot more animals, you gotta you gotta grow slowly because you don't want to you know make mistakes that are gonna cost you in the long run a lot of money. Um, so yeah, don't over mist and don't under mist. Uh, will you be selling Chihuahuas? Yeah, guys, if you're looking for something that I don't have on my website currently, you could still message me and I might have it or I might have access to it so I could special order it or something like that from somebody that I know and I trust. That way I know that you guys are getting something quality. Um, so, you know, if you're if, like, if for example, if you're looking for a Chihuahua, I don't have any at my facility right now, but I do have other friends that I know breed them and that might have something available that I could get in touch with and then you know we could help you find the animal that you're looking for uh, are you getting your building yeah so I'm, I'm looking into getting a new office space and actually this Monday I'm gonna go check out a couple offices hopefully I see something that that is you know gonna work for me um, so yeah, wish me luck. This Monday I'll be I'll be checking out uh, office space here around my house, and maybe I could you know definitely expand. This place is only a hundred and like twenty five or hundred and thirty square feet. I'm looking into getting a four hundred square foot one, and then obviously we could go from there. All right, let me see more questions. Uh, my Cressy is about four months old. He loves his crickets, but really doesn't like Rapashi or Pangea. Is it common for juveniles around this age? Okay, yeah. So, first of all, um, as you see here, when I feed... Let me switch this. When I feed these geckos, I only put a little drop of Pangea or Rapashi. Well, that's not a drop, but I, I only put a little bit because they don't eat that much. And even here, you could see that it, bare, it doesn't even look like they ate. So if I didn't know better, I would say, oh, my geckos are not eating. But I have never, guys, I have never assist, had to assist feed any gecko that was healthy. Every gecko will eat by itself, okay? So I just put the food there. Obviously, this is another, another reason why I love paper towels and you know egg crates and stuff. You could see all the poop everywhere, you know? If you, if you see poop, you know it's eating. That's good. You see there's a little piece of poop right there, right there. So I know it's eating. These geckos, they don't need to eat every day like mammals, you know. Reptiles in general, they have a slower metabolism. They don't need to eat every day. So they might only take a lick or two every night or every other night. And then they don't really need to any more than that. Especially depending on the temperatures you keep them. If you keep them very in the colder 70s. They're not going to want to eat very much. Um, if you keep them in the 78 to 80 degrees, they'll start to eat a little bit more. So I, I, I wouldn't, if you say your gecko doesn't like the Rapashi or Pangea, um, I mean, just leave it there in the enclosure. It will eat it. Don't spoil your gecko and only feed them crickets. Um, you know, feed crickets like once a week and trust me, he will eat the Pangea if he's healthy. Okay. Can you pull out a lychee cow? Yes, I just did. I'll pull out a baby lychee, man. I, I don't want to pull out an adult. Those things are mean. I'm kidding. I'll pull it out. But let me pull out this baby quickly. What's going on, brother? What's up, Matt? If you travel to Tinley, you should travel a little more north and come to Sewer Fest in Wisconsin, in Wisconsin once. Not a huge show, but great quality. Yeah, I've heard of Sewer Fest. Um... Yeah, definitely that's, you know, in my radar, maybe in the future, but uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to Tinley. Can't wait. Can female gargoyle geckos be housed together similar to crested's? Yes, they can. Just make sure there's a lot of... I'll show you how I keep my females so you get an idea, okay? So I have two big females. I have two big females in this 56 quart... Um, enclosure okay i'm gonna put it here so there's better lighting sorry guys i need a camera man okay so look there are two 
adult female gargoyle geckos here. I like to put this paper because it adds a lot of visual barriers. So they don't have to be, if they're uncomfortable with each other, they could just get away from each other. But most of, oh crap, this is not the one with the gargoyle geckos. Hold on. Wrong enclosure. So, okay, it's this one. Bear with me, people. I'm trying to help you out. Okay, so look. Okay, so here for the... I have two big female gargoyle geckos here. These girls are monsters. Look how big they are. Okay? This one and then this one. They both love to eat a lot, but they're in perfect condition. Oh, sorry. You know, perfect tails. Never had a problem with my gargoyles. And this is the trick. You pair them up when it's colder, okay? You give them a lot of visual barriers. You can see they could barely move in here. There's a lot of plants. There's some paper. There's two lay boxes. Two lay boxes. So if one goes in there and the other one wants to go in there and she does, and you know, they're bothering each other, they could just go to the other one. And I also provide two feeding spots. I have one here. And then one down there somewhere. If you keep your gargoyle geckos like this, you're not gonna have a problem, okay? Never had a problem with my gargoyle geckos. <laughs> of course, I know that gargoyles are a little more like aggressive, I, I would, I think. Like, I think that's how. So if, if, if you're having problems with your gargoyle geckos, definitely pair them up during the, the winter. Um, but if you keep them with enough visual barriers and f multiple feeding spots, multiple lay boxes, if it's females, you're going to be good. Are you going to have staff members? Oh, for the, for my facility? Well, yeah, I have my sister that she, you know, she's the one who cleans cages most of the time and she does, you know, like organizes the room because I'm very messy, um, and things like that. Um, I have, you know, Manny also helps out a lot with, um, you know, I don't, I don't even know what Manny does. No, I'm kidding. He, you know, he does, a so, he does some social media. He, he helps me out with the videos, obviously, when we go to shows. Um, and then me, I, I do most of the sales and, and all that stuff. As I grow, of course, I'm probably going to get a bigger staff. But, um, I mean, I'm just starting out, really. It takes a while to, to build a business, guys. This is like... This is a game of patience, but uh, yeah. Why why may a gargoyle gecko be priced lower? Um, well, it, it depends on the breeder. Some people, um, obviously, it depends on who's selling it. Some people like to have better prices. Some people, depending on their demand, you know, if if I'm selling a lot of gargoyle geckos, I'm gonna have to bring my prices up a little bit just because. I can't supply everybody, you know, it's just supply and demand, it's, sim it's simple e economics. Um, how many baby crests? but I will say this, make sure that, if, especially if you're buying online, buy from somebody who's credible because um, I have heard a lot of people in the past that they send their money to someone that they just find on the internet and, you know, sometimes they never, you know, they just steal the money um, or they just... Get, send you the wrong like uh, uh, unhealthy animal or something like that but you know that happens in any type of business I guess <laughs> uh, hit me up when you're looking for more staff yeah uh, would you would a fish tank work for a crested and I live in Wisconsin um, well obviously like you mean like a 10 gallon tank a 20 gallon tank yeah absolutely it could work you just gotta you know make it into their in type of enclosure, their type of environment. Uh, I was concerned it was in poor condition. Any new projects for lizards? Claudio, yes. Um, I mean, I showed them in the past in a YouTube live, but I we've been doing the Camellioles Barbados. Um, and those are, you know, some, some of the coolest anoles I've ever seen. So we're excited to work with those in the future, but right now they're not breeding or anything. Uh, my gecko don't seem to be growing any tips to get them bigger. Zach, um, 
Yeah, I, ju I released a video not too long ago that is we talk about like three different ways or four different ways to how to get your crested geckos to grow bigger and larger, uh, bigger and larger, <laughs> larger and faster. So check our, go to our YouTube channel um, just, and then look at some of the more recent videos. You're, you'll see it there. Uh, I just, uh, uh, yep, she, okay. Can it, can crested geckos be fed just what? Just that water diet stuff, I decay what it's called. Uh, they seem like the only option if I want a lizard. Okay, yes, they can be maintained just on that. Um, if you just want to feed that, I would suggest getting an adult because, like, an adult male or something, because a lot of times they don't like to eat crickets, anyways, or bugs. They get lazy and they don't want to hunt. But babies, like, if you're going to get a baby, I, I always recommend feeding insects because it just it gets them growing quicker, it gets them growing bigger. And uh, just gives them, you know, uh, something like they they need that. You see, a lot of the babies and the juveniles they go through this like stage where everything that moves they want to jump and bite at it. So I feel like that's Mother Nature's way of telling you that they they need that extra protein. But like I said, the adults a lot of times I have some adults that will never eat a cricket. So you could try to start with an adult, and they could be 100% maintained on that diet. Okay, I just saw a video from him too on how to grow your gecko faster. Lots of protein. Yep. See. Okay. Do you have Pac-Man frogs? No Pac-Man frogs. Could Manny do an update video of his collection? I will let him know. You want? You guys want to see that? Uh, how how many baby crested geckos do you keep in one box? Okay, depends on the size. Like, let me show you here. I think on this one. So here, I have two on this one. Okay, but they're you know they're they're pretty small you see so I have two in this one like this uh, I don't want to grab your little leg guy I think if they're really really tiny I might put three uh, let's see here there's one two yeah there's three in this one all right where are you going there's three in this one here so I will in in these kind of enclosures I only put like like two or three max, um, but uh, if you could keep them alone, that's even better because they won't they won't uh they won't have any other geckos uh, intimidating or anything like that. No heat mat either. They keep yeah no heat mat at all. Crested geckos don't need UV or heat. Nothing. I mean as long as your temperature and see your house is uh, like set in the 70s. I live in England, so room temp will freeze them to death. If you're not frozen to death, then probably they're not gonna be frozen to death. But um, you could give them a little, a low wattage bulb um, if you have some sort of like, if they could thermal regulate in the enclosure, you could give them a little low wattage bulb um, if it's really that cold in your home, okay? Uh, okay could you get a lily out or show a breeding group run with one in okay let me see let me go right Hold on. I also want to get a lychee out because somebody okay so oops let me flip this here's one of the groups of my lily white so this female here I actually just felt eggs in her She's obviously on fire, but this is a citrus and Mila yellow pinstripe, not fired up at all, as you can see. But I just woke them up in the middle of the day, so I can't expect much. So that's her. And then I got Amber and Glory right there. Let me pull them out for y'all because I'm sure you guys, you guys want to see them. All right, it's getting more complicated than I expected. Okay, this is Ember, a red pinstripe. She fires up really, really bright red. And then Glory, the lily white. Where is he? He's a little chicken. And this is Glory. Like I said, not fired up, obviously, but you guys could see how awesome these guys look in the light oh, come on it's 
So yeah, that's one of my uh, Lily White groups. Sorry. Okay, guys. Um, I'm gonna. My phone's about to die. This YouTube live stuff kills my battery. So uh, if you have any other questions, like always, feel free to, to um, you know, contact us. Would I cry if Glory lost his tail? No, I don't care about tails, honestly. Um, sounds a bit mean, but you can keep adult cressies in tall tubs, breed like eight seventy little tall. Yeah, no, it's not mean at all. Yeah, you could keep them in in that in that uh, in the tubs. Okay, all right, guys. Um, Hopefully you learned a little bit from this YouTube video. I know sometimes I go on here and I don't know exactly what I'm, I'm going to do. But, you know, we play off of each other. So thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for Tinley videos and a YouTube live in Tinley Park, Illinois, hopefully, if it's not too crazy. And uh, you guys are the best. I appreciate you guys. Peace.